Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody had a good uh, holiday. Yeah, we're finally getting Christmas weather here tonight. I'm going to get three or four inches of snow by tomorrow evening. All right, as we can see, the market uh, was still in its profit-taking mode. And the next uh, video I'm working on is timing. And one of the strongest uh, uh, signals or combinations for timing is our, our doji sandwich. Makes this very simple. If you can add up every all the simple indicators that we uh, utilize, one being the stochastics, First of all, we use the signals. There we had dojis, and then that closed below the T-line. Then another doji, which made it very simple. They needed to open positive and trade positive today to tell us the uptrend was remaining in progress. The fact that they were selling off hard told us they weren't going to stay up above the T-line. Were we expecting, or is anybody expecting a market down 330 points? Definitely not, but at least we knew we are probably heading in a southerly direction today. And that uh, was that was across the board. So this wasn't a market where they were consolidating. This was a market where they were selling off everything. And that's probably due to profit taking. Everybody was waiting until after the first of the year to uh, uh, before taking profits uh, with probably some very good gains. Let's make this. There's some very good gains for the year. If I can do this correctly. And so starting from here to here for the year, yeah, pretty much you're going to see some people taking profits right after the first of the year. I don't think it's so much a head and shoulders set up. Now nah, this is more looks like a double top to me, which means our first target is coming back down here to test this level which means they could uh, sell off pretty hard over the next couple of days, bringing this down to this level, which would get us pretty close to the 200-day moving average on the uh, S&P 500. And probably heading back down toward the lows here on the transportation index. So what we can really see right now is every time they got up to this level, it became very indecisive. Doji, shooting star. Doji, hanging man. Doji and then the close back below the T-line. Yep, they sell, if they'd sold their gains, uh, whatever, two days ago, four days ago, they would have to take those gains for this year. Now that they've sold them, now it goes into the next year. So they've got a whole year to kind of uh, maneuver to see what they're going to do with those tax gains. Let's see. The uh, interest rates, bond prices are still heading up. This is still a very nice chart. I think over in the, the World Cup uh, uh, trading program, we're long the, uh, uh, the bonds, and we're short uh, crude oil. Let's do the... Uh, And as, this is where you kind of observe the obvious. This is where you can make your big money in uh, commodity trading or futures trading. Is Just notice what it's done here at the T-line. They never really could get it up decisively above the T-line. Even right in here with crude oil at $55 a barrel after being at was 135 at one time, 115 Um Uh, that uh, they still couldn't get it up above the 55 level. Where's our next target? Now they're talking down into the $40 area. Uh, John, uh, we've set up a service where, with uh, using World Cup, where they've taken we've taken our uh, signals and the formulas, or not the formulas, but putting all the uh, criteria. And so when a trade goes on in my account, it goes in everybody's account that's in the uh, system over at World Cup. 
So uh, you can set up a World Cup trading, and it's, it takes all the emotions out of the trading. It just uses what our, our charts uh, and our signals tell us to do without having to. It's done automatically. Okay, what else we got? Our coffee was uh, acting well or starting to act well. Let me see what's there. Big bullish engulfing. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Big bullish engulfing right here at the T line in the oversold area. Likely pop back up toward the 50 day moving average. Uh, let's see, we did interest rates. Oh, I'm long uh, in my own trading account. Uh, live cattle. But live cattle, as you can see, let's make this a little bit bigger, did what we call the bobble. The bobble is when it hits a resistance level, it pulls back right to our T line and then starts back up. And notice how this started back up. Closed tier, they gapped it up again and did a doji. Uh, so they're setting up for now it looks like a double doji uh, bullish uh, kicker signal. If they open this positive after this gap up, uh, telling us that the 50-day uh, moving average isn't going to act as resistance, then you've got a good prospect of it moving back up into the existing price trend. And I say existing price trend. You can see where the price trend was. That makes for a very good trade that they could trade it fairly quickly back up into that range. Oh, uh, I th if, where do you find out the details about the World Cup? If you, ooh, I don't know. If you email Abraham at candlestickforum.com, he can send you the links or all the information. Crude oil long-term lower trend line support at 47. That could be. Um, let's see. What did we just do? No, I don't think there is any trend line support anywhere. Here, this this is a, a, a the nice part about having the charts. As you can see, when the panic selling starts in, that's where you start getting some of these big downdrafts. Uh, today, uh, crude oil is down like two dollars and eighty cents. You could have a four dollar day, a six dollar day before they uh, hit bottom. Uh, thank you, Ed C. Uh, Would you enter a uh, enter the cattle trade at this point, or is that passed? Uh, the nice thing about commodities is that you can get into the trend because your profit is. It's not like that trend is over. What were we just looking at? Cattle. So we know where the uptrend would be confirming, even though we're getting up toward the overbought area. But if they open positive after a doji broke out through the 50, that's telling us the 50 is not acting as resistance. We're starting up, or we're heading up for uh, more upside. Now, on the other side of this, I will probably be shorting lean hogs tomorrow. Because notice what it did. Notice what we have over here. Kind of that. Let me make this a little bit smaller. So it's, I guess, kind of a wedge formation. And when it broke through this. Uh, bottom level or this lot of bottom support. Now look what we have going. Looks like a bearish J hook pattern, which means they could keep crashing this one down for a, for a good while. A blue ice failure on cattle. Well, could be. It depends on how they open it tomorrow. But I would suspect more that. They would have to come back down through the T line to get that blue ice failure. So we got a couple prospects or a couple game plans here. If it opens positive, and the reason I think they're still heading positive is because of our knowledge of what a kicker or a flutter kicker signal is. Is when they open it here and close it here, and then they gap it up above the previous day's open, and they're going this way. I tell you, there's still a lot of force to this upside. Okay, and then let's see, lean hogs, and then gold. Let 
looks like it's picking up some strength in here. And silver, the same scenario. So the old gold price, or the gold stocks, and gold and silver mining stocks picked up some steam. More so because notice what's happening at this price right here. You're getting pretty much a support level. Now we have an inverted hammer with bullish confirmation. If they open this positive, they can be taking silver back up at least to the top of this little uh, channel, which means you've got a few days of a good bullish trade. Would you use short oil or is it too late? Again, back to the scenario that it's, you can be shorting a trend um, until it's over. And as we can see, the question was, was it, let's go back here to, was it time to short here? Was it time to short here, here? Right now, it's in a downtrend. Just want to stay short until you see that uh, a, a buy signal. And there hasn't even been a buy signal. Uh, with a confirmation above the T-line. So, yes, I would still be short, but I'd still be very nimble. Um, and this is where if I was uh, shorting uh, crude oil, I'd be watching the 10-minute charts very closely. Wasn't this low even then? Uh, And even in the daily chart, do you look for the bullish comp? If you see a reversal signal on day one on the daily chart, where do you look for bullish confirmation? On day three, after day two's bullish confirmation of the daily, or do you look for the 10 minute on day two? Uh, my confirmation is what does it do if you see a bullish signal and it's occurring in the right conditions did it confirm the next day and is it confirming so we'll uh, we'll we can do that uh, uh, if let's see now that it's cold outside and we're all stuck inside we'll probably be doing some evening uh, sessions on Tuesday and Wednesday nights and the entry and exit strategy uh, session will be a good one to do here early in the year All right, let me see, uh, oh, the dollar. Dollar continued higher except, notice what it's done up here. This is why you always want to kind of be aware of 73 down there, jeez, where, what, investor sentiment usually does. Now we've had a gap up shooting star in the dollar and it's opening lower after hours tonight, trading lower. Not necessarily a reversal of the long trend, but at least we suspect a reversal, which means they can bring it back to the T-line. And once it gets back here, if you're short, you just see what it does on the T-line. What tickers can we use for oil? I don't know what uh, is USO, one of them, ah, humbug. Oh, for over here, yeah, um, as far as our futures, it's uh, CLAG, um, which is a February contract. USO is the biggest one, all right, okay, thank you, Roger. Yeah, I think uh, OIH is another, yeah, that's the uh, ETF for uh, oil. Okay, today, uh, I say today, in the past, I've made tons of money in that first three weeks of trading after the first of the year because you can see what's coming on strong right out of the gate. And the rationale for that is, Usually people aren't very investing very heavily 
during two weeks around Christmas and New Year's. So that means they're all kind of reestablishing or trying to figure out what their portfolio is going to look like for the next year and which sectors they want to be out of and which ones they want to be in. So today was not a good day, obviously, to try to, to uh, no. pinpoint that because of the market being down 300 some odd points. But it still gave us some uh, indication of which, which patterns and which uh, you know, sectors were acting strong. We've uh, recommended CCAP uh, or RCAP here not too long ago. And notice what it's done after it's come up through the 50. It stayed up pretty strong. And a lot of the uh, biotechs, wow, which were acting pretty good before the New Year's. What is this one? Let me get there to that. Notice the big fry pan bottom here on ARWR. Um, now, the, this day was rumors out that uh, GILD might be buying this company buying them out. But notice what's happening here. The investor sentiment was building up, and notice what type of day it had. Very indecisive trading day when the market was off huge. So remember, the patterns work to your advantage in two, two aspects. One, when they work, or when they do kick in, they kick in with big profits. You're echoing. Uh, better check to see if you're not on um, twice, uh, yeah, yeah. Close out one of your logins, um, and the second uh, benefit you get from it is on a day like today, the pattern is still going to kind of keep the uh, price in control a uh, high percentage of the time. Um, RP RX, another one. Traded very indecisively today, but notice the pattern. It stayed above the T line. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So even on a horrific day, the long positions were still acting decently well. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the ones that we've been following. AMBA, still in this slow uptrend. Hold back today, but not with any great enthusiasm. Um, DYAX, same scenario. Pulled back a wee little bit, but not with any great enthusiasm. So this uptrend should hopefully still be in progress. IQNT, another uh, uh, biotech. I think it's a biotech. Maybe not. But notice it's fry pan bottom. It didn't pull back with any great significance today. So the patterns work for you in two uh, manners. Big profits when they work, and in the progress of, or process of working, even in a terrible market like today, they still trade trade up. Fold was still trading positive today. QLogic, that's, yeah, thank you, Dave. And the, uh, so which kind of leads me to uh, that some of the uh, uh, the communication stocks were still acting well. QLogic also didn't do anything real indecisive or anything real decisive to the downside today. Um, NC, row. NC, notice what NC is doing over the last three days. Big inverted hammers. This still makes it an easy entry that if they open this positive tomorrow, more than likely they're going to be taking it up because they couldn't close it below the T line. Your stochastics are starting to slowly curl back up. And remember, inverted hammers, if they open positive, the probabilities are pretty strong that you're going to start heading uh, positive. So we're hanging on to this one because notice what it did today. It was still trading positive today. And even though the market was terrible, they backed it off. This just kind of tells you the bulls are still fighting to get into this one. The bears are knocking it down because of the market. But if this market does a doji day tomorrow, there's a good possibility they could take uh, 
the the uh, insignificant uh, the significance is that every time the uh, they uh, take it up, the bears are knocking it down. But they've done it three days in a row. The bulls. I'm sorry. What did I say that right? The bulls take it up. The bears knock it down. It's still telling you that if they trade this positive, the bulls are winning. Um, or it's in a situation where the bulls can be winning. If because at some point with additional buying, the the bears going to say, "Shoot, the bulls are still here. Get me out of the way." And that's when the uh, the uptrend starts with great strength. CNAT is one that's coming out of a scoop pattern. Open positive and traded back off. But what was the message today? The message was they gapped this up huge. Somebody was getting in this profit taking. Just wait to see what happens when the profit taking is over. So on something like this, I start watching to see if there's going to be a doji day or a bullish harami. Then I'll start buying because we know we'll probably have a 45 degree coming off of here. I say we, we know we have a 45 degree, a high probability result of a big gap up with profit taking is when the profit taking is over, the continued buying is, uh, is in place because of this information right here, that they were trying to get back into this one with great enthusiasm. Uh, so this is where you kind of observe the obvious. Kite up nicely today on a bad day. ES, whoops, ESPR, a nice day. These are all in the uh, biotech area. So this is why I say observe the obvious. Uh, this industry, the uh, medical industry, AEGR, nothing spectacular. But notice what it did today with 330 points down on the Dow and 72 points down on the NASDAQ. They were still trading this one positive. It can be bought on positive trading tomorrow. And again, this is just more to illustrate that there was buying in specific sectors today, like an ISIS. That's a nice little uh, kicker type gap up through this little wee little teeny resistance level. As long as this stays above the T line, you want to stay long on ISIS. Let's see, where am I here? Jiva was one that I was playing earlier. But notice what this one's done over the last month and a half. Move from around this. Oops. We did this too shortly. Let's see. It came from the same range. Now up here in the $100 range, so it's up 45% uh, over the last 30 days. So there's, there's some, still some very good industries to be uh, putting your money in. Now, when I say industries or sectors, a lot of people say, well, do you, are you afraid to have too much money in one sector? or?" just a couple sectors? My answer is no. If we were all just putting our money in and waiting for prices to go up on something, yeah, you would, they, they tell you to diversify. And the, to me, the word diversify means is you're not going to pay attention to your portfolio, and we're not going to pay attention to your portfolio. We want you in things where if something's going up and something else is going down, you're still all right. And I could never figure that out as an investor is why would you put things, put your money in things where you're hoping some are going up to offset the ones that are going down. If you're going to invest, put your money in the ones that are going up. And when they stop going up, move to something else. Um, stochastic studies are 1233. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there's uh, AMAG. Stay with this as long as it stays above the T-line. And this is not so much to say these are uh, good recommendations. It's just kind of illustrating that there is money coming into uh, these sectors. What did I just do? Who wrote this? That didn't work. Oh, that's because I'm dyslexic. 
there's a nice J hook pattern in RLYP. That one I wouldn't be afraid to be buying uh, tomorrow, no matter what the market is doing, if it opens positive. CYTK, another one that's telling us that uh, that they aren't selling this off. Notice what they haven't done. They haven't been able to close it, not even below the T line. They haven't even been able to close it below the three T line. That tells us the strength of this one's still uh, still up uh, pretty strong. What was the last one before? Let's see. That was R L Y P. Nice J hook pattern. Uh, this is this is what we call the classic. Classic is you have a fry pan bottom, strong price move. Prerequisite for a J hook pattern is a strong price move which means this move right here should be the same magnitude as this move right here. Okay, what else did I have? All right, there's, uh, and some of the golds are uh, uh, picking up some steam right now. There's the uh, J-Nug. Whoops, let's make this a little bit bigger. This one you can keep an eye on. Be ready to buy this on, on how come this? That's still got some pretty good uh, price move to it. Even just coming up to the uh, this level is going to give you a nice 15% move up to the 50-day moving average. I think AG. Uh, no, stochastics are uh, different than the uh, uh, the William R. Uh, here's AG. Notice it's kind of rounding bottom. There's the T-line crunch, left-right combo right here at the uh, 50. Tells us there's now no resistance until they probably get up into this range, which would be a good 20% uh, move, and then possibly up to the 200-day moving average. When should I buy J Nug? You can be buying this one on the uh, basis that the first target is probably up here to the 50. That's still going from 32 to 40. Eight points on a $32 stock is still about a 25% return. Aren't the stochastics bad for AG? Uh, yes, but remember, this is why as you get into candlestick analysis, the signals itself should be in the oversold area. The pattern, like a fry pan bottom, is usually going to break out when the stochastics are in the overbought condition. Uh -uh. Let's see, live cattle, February. I don't have the answer for you, Achilles. Uh, yeah, we got our GLS on here somewhere. RGLS pulled back to the uh, 50 today. I'm sorry, to the T line. You can still see the pattern, but you, at the T line, you have you're having a little bobble in here, meaning hit the 50, pulling back. You stay with it as long as it doesn't close back below the T line. Now, if this opened lower tomorrow and started trading down, I'd probably close it out with the idea that I'd buy it right back if it came back up through the T-line. Uh, oh, that's all right. Okay, let's see. What else are we looking at right now? Let's see. Boston Scientific. There's that fry pan bottom. And there's your breakout. Notice where your stochastics are, almost up in the overbought area. Wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one on positive trading because notice how the breakout is occurring with a little kicker signal off the T-line and they've broken through uh, 
this level. So they're at a new recent high. That one could start uh, uh, showing some more upside into wave three. CMCM. This is where you kind of observe the obvious. Notice how this bottomed out with a whole series of dojis. Anytime you see the dojis, oh boy. Oops, hang on for one second. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is where if you know what the nature is of the signals, in this case, look at that whole series of indecisive trading. This basically tells you they made a decision going in this direction. Could you explain pattern breakout? All right. Remember, patterns are different than signals. A signal you want to see occur when the stochastics are at the bottom. A pattern usually will have uh, investor sentiment uh, building up. And I'll, we'll, I'll go through some of that, more of that, as, as next time we find another pattern here. IPHI, there's that fry pan bottom. Notice where your stochastics are. When they broke out here, they were already in the overbought condition. Where does the enthusiasm come back in? When they break out of these patterns, that's when the buying starts. Um, we get a serious move down. Uh, Tim, yes, we will we'll get to the bear bearish charts here in a minute. SGMS, little scoop type pattern, morning star signal. Likelihood that there'll be some more upside. Uh, VICM. There's kind of a slow curve. This one. I wouldn't be afraid to be buying on positive trading. And CUDA, CUDA, this is where you observe the obvious. Where did this show a lot of support? As soon as they hit the 50-day moving average, you have a bullish engulfing signal that closed above the T-line. Where is this one likely going to move to? Probably right back up into this range and get right back into the existing trend. All right, so that's the uh, bullish chart. These are the charts that you start looking for. You can see things rolling over. And there's your doji. Stochastic still heading down makes it very simple. If they open this lower after failing here at the T-line, there's a good prospect they're taking this one down, at least to fill this gap, which isn't that far, but at least gives you a running start to be in the right direction at the right time. And then the next likely target is down here at the 200-day moving average. Uh, I know in the options trading room, somebody had picked out EOG to go short. And this is as very simple reasoning. An evening star, doji, gap down. A close below the T-line, a failure at the T-line, and what's the overall trend of this stock? As you can see, it's been heading down. So anytime you start seeing weakness and the T they uh, start closing below the T-line, that's when you start, especially if they start showing signals in here, that you can get, uh, at least you know you're probably going to be in the right direction at the right time. So a lot of the... Uh, Whereas the biotechs were acting strong, the uh, energy sector is still acting weak. BTE. Notice the dojis here. They couldn't get this up. Now they have a doji gap down, more than likely. Got a wave one, wave two, going into wave three, which could take you down. Shoot, another six, eight points to the downside. WTE. What happened here? Aha. WTI, who scribbles these signals? Rolling over, where, what direction is this chart heading? Been heading down. Where's the next likely target? 
can draw a line down here at the bottom of the trend channel. So you're looking at some place down here, which give you a good 40, 50 percent downside potential. Bass failure there. You're in a downtrend. So remember, this is uh, opposite of grabbing for the fallen knife. This is observing what direction a price is moving and seeing what signals you're going to have to tell you whether they're buying or selling still. In this case, a doji gap down shows you they're still probably selling. And what's your target? Probably the bottom of this trend channel, down another 50%. Uh, Diamond Offshore, notice when it got back up to the resistance level, bunch of dojis, and this is a little kicker type signal. It tells you they were anxious to get out of this one today. More than likely, this one is heading back down to the bottom of the trend channel. And the HOS. Doji gap down, downtrending. Uh, I would look for this this target area. So this is nothing more than taking advantage of what the investor sentiment is telling us. In this case, with Doji's and then gapping down on a lot of these energy stocks, there's still targets to the downside. I tell you, you probably want to be short uh, in these stocks. Let's see, this C N Q. Canadian natural resources. Why is this intriguing? Because they did a kicker signal today to the downside with stochastics up here in the overbought area. This could be your next target down here in this range, coming off the bottom of these uh, of this channel. And what else do we have in here? E P E. Wave one, wave two, going to wave three, probably heading for this this area. So there's still a lot of downside in these. So a lot of people ask, well, if they've sold off so so uh, heavily, this is Herbalife, apparently in trouble still. But the nice thing about this chart is it broke the support level and it did with a doji gap down. That tells me there could be another move like this. Uh, taking you down into this area, which I would guess is somewhere around the 25 range. Is it better to wait to return close to the T-line if you're far away from the T-line when shorting? Uh, yeah, but notice, like over here, you were far away from the T-line, further away, further away, and then you started seeing support that brought it back up. So you're playing the move, not the T-line. I wouldn't be afraid to be shorting this one on weakness tomorrow based upon the doji gap down. Remember, the signal is your first criteria. Then everything else is just kind of confirming or telling you where you are in that, that price move. Uh, let's see. Two, I think, is one of the transportation stocks. Uh, that's an offshore. Another one. Again, observe the obvious. Where did this one fail? Right here at the 50. Where's your next likely target? Probably at least down here or lower. And GTLS. This is where I always want to see where you are as far as the trend itself. The, the old adage, the trend is your friend. Well, if we can see that the trend is continuing based upon there's a little dumpling top. They're probably taking this one down further. So how far? I have no idea. It could be off of this, this pattern. It could be off of this pattern. But at least we know we're in the right direction at the right time. All right, so that's about all I got tonight. Uh, right now, with the uh, markets trading off this hard, I would suspect they've got to come back and find a support level someplace. Unless they do a severe reversal tomorrow, which would tell us also that the 50-day moving average is going to act as support. So it will be important to see what the uh, pre-market futures are telling us in the morning as to whether we should be shorting and 
again, with the uh, you know, the different elements of uh, uh, different elements, the different sectors, that your biotechs can still be bought and your energy stocks can be sold right now. Crude oil. Just, uh, yeah, a lot of people, well, remember, people were uh, first projecting that it was going to support at 85. Then it was 75. Then it was 60. So, remember, prices move because of fear and greed. Right now, nobody's, uh, there's no place to put all the oil right now. So, uh, um I had to step away. Was that symbol two? No, that was T O O. Whoops. Bye. So, um, one of the things that I've learned about investing that prices will move way past where you think they'll move to. So there's no telling where they could take uh, crude oil prices. Where do you find pre-market futures? Uh, Ron, what I do is I turn on CNBC. I have it on my TV, but I turn the sound off, and usually they'll show you the, what the uh, futures look like uh, before the market opens up. Uh, which futures do you look at in the pre-market? Uh, they're all on there. The, uh, they'll show you that the Dow, today uh, the Dow was down, I forget, 70 points. And then, so, yeah, the pre-market futures are on there, plus some of your, uh, or a lot of your uh, trading platforms. Thinkorswim has the YM. I use that to see if that's the, uh, the futures for the, uh, the Dow. I've got that up on my, uh, my watch list on Thinkorswim, so you can pretty much tell what's what's happening to the market, if that's up or down. Um, OK, that's right. OK, with that, uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. Oh, we got people way ahead of the double line. All right, in 2.8 seconds, do the next double line. Uh, JJA, it's a, the agricultural sub-index. Never saw that before. But it did a kicker type signal today. Um, this one you can buy, especially if it opens positive tomorrow. And is this natural gas undefined time interview not sure f dot n g natural gas still in a downtrend and this one uh, nova gold or nova gold uh, wouldn't be afraid to be buying this one, especially if it came up through the 200. You had a big bullish engulfing breakout. You have to see what they do once they get uh, to the resistance levels. In this case, you still got a lot of juice left in the stochastics to push it through that level. CLG, right now, it looks like it's probably moving sideways, waiting for the 50-day moving average. Short on CVX, yes. Now, Chevron isn't a very exciting stock to short. It doesn't have big big uh, price moves to it or percentage moves, but that's a good short at this point. And Slumberger, stay short on this one. SSYS, stay short on this one. There's that slow curve, a bullish engulfing signal. Uh, Closing below the T-line on Friday, was it? This one I wouldn't be afraid to short on weakness because it tells you this support level is not there anymore. 
now you have a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Uh, DY, you stay long. Notice how twice it's going to use the T-line area as support. Stay long, but I would put a sell stop at the T-line. I wouldn't want to see it come back even intraday at this point back down to that level. It should stay up above, uh, stay above the T-line at this point. Guild, Guild just doesn't have a chart that I'd get too excited about, either long or short. Unless it does something spectacular here off of this signal, you've got a long-legged uh, spinning top. I wouldn't necessarily be a buyer or seller of this one right now. I think there's lots better charts out there. Is this Harley Davidson? You can be shorting this one. Notice the failure at the at the uh, 200, the 50, and the 20 with a left-right combo, I'd suspect a wave three of this magnitude, somewhere down in this area. GMCR, I would suspect this is going down to the 200-day moving average. See, we did AEGR Trove. Uh-oh. Trove, uh, that looks like a good-looking chart. I don't know what the volume was today. But this one, you just stay long until you see a sell signal on this one. And C, whoops, C, I, S, G. Another one where you just stay long until you see a sell signal. Notice how they couldn't get this one back below the uh, T-line. Now you've got a breakout, but you're at the top of the trend channel. So I'd put a sell stop right here. I wouldn't want to see it come halfway down that candle. Halo, just stay long. Notice the big move up, and then the 45 degrees. So at this point, you just stay long until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. You can still buy puts on uh, BABA right now. Um, it's failing. And SCCO, kicker signal to the downside. You can be shorting this one on weakness tomorrow. STZ, uh, this one you get ready to buy on positive trading tomorrow. This is where your J-hook pattern is coming right back to the T-line and doing a bullish engulfing signal. I would suspect the next move is to the top of this Kind of this trend taking up here someplace out of our screen. Whoops. Zaza. Wouldn't be buying this one just yet, but it is doing a J-hook pattern. If I was going to buy this, I'd probably have a buy stop right above the highs to make sure it can get back up through there, confirming that the... Uh, the T-line was acting as support. ACAD. Another one that I probably wouldn't be long or short. If I was anything, I'd be more apt to be short. But this looks like a wedge formation, meaning it's moving sideways until the, uh, it, the 50 catches up to it. GSAT. This one, you can't go short, but you shouldn't be in this one right now. There's nothing here uh, that tells you you want to be in the stock. And Bank of America, there's kind of a, anytime you see this type of action where they have a big tail and you've got a hammer type signal, they better open positive. If they open it lower the next day, that told you the buying that was occurring fizzled and they're still in the downtrend. ACHN. Uh, this one, I've been recommending not being long or short in this one right now. There is just no direction to it. GSAT. Oh, Peshaw. GSAT, you, can, you can't be short this one either, so you shouldn't be in this one at all. Oh, I already did that one. That's why it looks so familiar. 
Exoma. This one you get ready to buy. That little hammer after a series of dojis. At least you know they can probably pop it back up to the 200 and the 50. An ARIA left right combo. You can get ready to buy this one on positive trading, but you'd be very diligent to see what it does at this level. It needs to break through there. Dang. You stay long on this one as long as it doesn't close back below the T line. You had your bullish Harami gap up. Not any decisive trading back below the T line, but as long as you're above the T line, you stay with it with the first target being the 50 day moving average. And see LDX, stay long on this one. Obviously supported with the morning star signal here and supported again. Stay long as long as it stays above the T line. CHN. Uh, CHN, as you can see, it's above the T line, but it's above it with very indecisive trading. So still use the T line as your stop. It shouldn't come back through that level. Uh, CERS down big after. All right. Yeah, that one needs to stay above the T line. We'll have to see what that does in the morning. PLNR, another one that has to open positive, staying above the T line. And FCX, this one you get ready to go short on weakness. It has that little kicker type signal to the downside. Skull. Uh, nice big move. Notice they couldn't close it on Friday below the T-line. Right now you just stay long until you see a sell signal. And CISG, another one. We, did we do this one earlier? That looks familiar. Anyway, stay long on this one. Just be yeah, use the halfway point of that candle as your stop. S. And SS, oh, let's see. All you can do here is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Just kind of a slow, steady eddy. Let's see, Facebook. Uh, it is coming back to test the uh, 50. If you're short, you stay short. Ever since your dark cloud up here, uh, and now you have a close below the T-line. If I was anything, I'd be short uh, Facebook, but it probably wouldn't be my best uh, short trade. Oh, man, we're just now down to another failure, uh, F or VMW failure at the 50. Look for it to come to the bottom of the trend channel. Stay short until you see a buy signal. And Noah, Noah has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. If it opens lower, they're probably coming back to test the 50 on this one also. Har, I thought maybe you were laughing there for a minute, Bob. Uh, this one you can be shorting. Left, right combo. A break of the uh, support level, possibly uh, coming all the way back down here. I've got Sandy's little grandsons here, and their favorite joke is, where do uh, pirates like to retire to? The Arctic Ocean. TBD, you stay short on this. Um, if you're looking to buy it, you don't buy it until it closes back up above the T line. Dugley. Dugley, it wouldn't be long or short. There's no direction to this one. I would be shorting it if it closes back down through the 50. Mankind. Uh, 
another one that uh, probably wouldn't be long or short right now. It needed to uh, show bullish confirmation. If you bought it today on bullish uh, bullish open, which would have been the right thing to do, it you want to see this one open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, it's coming back to test the T-line, and we don't know what it's going to do from there. Ford. Or you can be shorting this one right now um, if it trades lower tomorrow. First, it, with it right here in the middle of the uh, the, the 50, you want to see if it's going to act as that support area. Rack, rack was a reversal. Notice it headed up and then came back down. This one you can be shorting if it opens uh, uh, weaker tomorrow. Let's see, R Y A M. Another one you can be buying with the uh, prospect of it going to the 50-day moving average, using the T line as your stop. Tazar. Well, my speedy fingers just can't hit anything. Tazar should have been out of this one today. There's your bearish Doji sandwich. You can always buy this one back. Right now, the probabilities are telling you to be out of it. You can always buy it back on the next buy signal. And R O or O R E X, this one has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it tomorrow. New links. If you own it, you stay long. If you're looking to buy it, it wouldn't have executed today. It needed to open positive and trade positive. You can still buy it if it comes back up through uh, Friday's close. Well, well, well. S W I R. S W I R. It, this one has to open positive. Um, if you're if you're long, you stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T line. Good year. Just can't get any traction. <laughs> oh man, what a funny guy! This one you can be shorting with the anticipation they're coming back down to the support level and uh, uh, testing the 50-day moving average. ASTI, I wouldn't be long or short this one. There's nothing here to get excited about. And fuel cell. Nothing excited about this one either. Wouldn't be in, in either one of these. ACUR. This one you could be buying. Just make sure your volume is big enough on a 50 cent stock. It needs to be trading quite a few million shares to want to play with something that small. PBPB. You can still be buying this one. Notice the fry pan bottom. Notice what it did today on a market like today. You can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow, telling you that the uh, oh, the uh, you know 200-day moving average isn't acting as resistance. IBM, another one that uh, you could be shorting this one on weakness. If there, you see the market acting weak again, because it's telling you the 50 day is acting as resistance. The new links, EXA. EXA, uh, you, you shouldn't be in this one. If you were long, it should have been closed out today and not a real good chart to trade, unless you were looking at EXAS. Same scenario. This one uh, you should be out of. BlackBerry. BlackBerry, you should have been out of this one today on the lower open, but you can be ready to buy this back if it opens positive tomorrow back up above the T-line. CLF, you should have been out of this one. Also with the gap down. Let's make this big enough where we can see it. With a gap down, you can always buy this one if it comes back. But right now, with an opening that much lower, you should have been out of the trade because it was back below the T-line, and there's just no good trajectory to it anymore. Uh, 
Let's see. Looks like we've done most of those. DDD. DDD also failed right here at the uh, T line. You're still in this slow downtrend. At best, you should be short this one using the T line as your stop. Let's see. The big E is Netflix. Netflix got hit hard. This one you can be shorting on the kicker signal tomorrow. Or confirming the kicker signal. Apple, stay short. There's your little evening star signal. And a close back below the T line. Good prospect now coming back down to the 200 day moving average. Goog. Can be shorting Goog and Amazon. Can be shorting Amazon, a failure at the 50 with a left-right combo. DCLI, this is a perfect example. I was, well, I was going to bring this one up. I did, oh, I did have this one. I missed it. Notice the fry pan bottom. Notice the uh, big move with a doji. If you get that big a move and you have a doji, you take off at least half your position. If it moves higher from there, you're all right. If it moves lower, you close it out immediately. This is probably moving now back to test the uh, the T line. To, if you own that one, it has to open positive tomorrow. If it opens lower, you close it out. HIMX, nothing exciting about this stock. And as you can see, it's failing at the 200. Um, Okay, we did Navigode. Let's see, all right, we did Netflix. To close close to previous lows, is it time to exit puts? Uh, remember, uh, just because it's here doesn't mean there's a sell signal. This could be the failure taking you to this this level, which means they could be bringing it down here. Let the uh, chart tell you what it's doing. Now, this support level is kind of telling you uh, that's some an area to watch, but right now there isn't telling us it's not telling us that this is acting as support or there's any buying going on here. So just use this. Uh, Use other technical indicators or levels to see what the uh, charts are telling you at the time. Let's see, CLF, we don't know where it's going. But at this point, uh, yeah, if, you, if it opens weaker, you can be shorting it. Just make sure the volume is hefty on this one. And THLD, Another one that has to open positive. If it opens lower, you're in a bobble. It's going to come back to the T-line. Twitter, nothing exciting here one way or the other. It wouldn't be long or short. You can see you're in a wedge. I'd rather buy it after it's broken out one way or the other. And Abbott. Up to American Barrick. Nothing real exciting here either. I mean, if you're going to buy this, it has to open positive for your doji sandwich, but then your resistance level is still going to be the 50 day moving average. Conoco, you can be shorting this one. CBOE, uh, left right combo. Uh, you stay long until you see a sell signal on this one. QSR. You can be shorting this one. And GPRO wasn't off too bad today, but it was off. You stay long as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. GDX. GDX, you can be buying this one, the strength coming into the uh, golds. The uh, Russell, 
Russell selling off. Watch to see what it does when it gets to the 50. Amba, we did. Amba sold off a little bit, but not anything with any great magnitude. Except you do want to see this trade positive. If it opens lower tomorrow, you can close it out because it's probably going to drift back to the 50 to see if there's any uh, support there again. And Sherwin Williams, this one you should have been out of today. But with the fact that it started trading positive, I say you should have been out. I would have been hard pressed to keep this one with a doji gap down, lower open. But what you can do, and this is why when you uh, see, I wouldn't even with the market selling off like it was, I would have still probably closed this one out just because the market wasn't going to help it any. But you can buy if if you own it, you stay long, but it has to open positive tomorrow and get back up above the T line. M O L G, nothing here to get excited about. I'd have my money someplace else. Okay, with that, let's call it a night. Got to go out and watch the snow. We'll be back here bright and early tomorrow, but I would still look for the uh, uh, the uh, energy stocks to uh, be selling off. Right now, there isn't anything to tell you that there's any money coming in back into the crude oil uh, at this point. It could get down here to the $40 range. Okay. All right. With that, everybody, uh, uh, all right. We'll see everybody bright and early in the morning.